Hi, it's Ms. Vitale. This podcast is the third in a series on plants. It is meant for AP Biology Summit High School. We're going to discuss the structure and function of angiosperms. They are the most diverse and widespread of all land plants, and there are over 250,000 known species. They are the primary producers and the base of all food webs for almost all terrestrial ecosystems. We classify angiosperms based on the cotyledons, which are the seed leaves. They are based on one cotyledon and therefore are a monocot. Monocots usually have parallel veins in their leaves. Their flowers usually have multiples of threes and they have a scattered arrangement of the vascular bundles in the stem. Eudicots have two cotyledons or seed leads, leaves in their seeds, and they usually have branching veins in their leaves. Their flowers come in multiples of four or five petals, and the vascular bundles in the stems tend to form a ring. When we look at the plant body, we divide it into the roots and the shoots. The roots are below ground and they anchor the plant, but their primary function is to absorb water and nutrient. Root hairs are tiny little extensions and they increase the surface area for better water absorption. The shoots are the above ground parts and primarily made of stems, leaves, and flowers. The stems support the leaves and the flowers. The leaves are mainly for photosynthesis and the flowers are for reproduction. The buds are underdeveloped shoots, and there are terminal buds which lengthen the plants, and axial buds which branch the plant. The nodes are where the leaves are attached, and the internodes are the stem between the nodes. Some plants grow rhizomes, which are horizontal modified stems. They can store food and they can spread to form new plants. They can be above ground or below ground. Tubers are the ends of rhizomes that are enlarged, enlarged usually due to storage of starch. The potato is an example. The celery is an example of an enlarged petiole of the stem. There are three major different types of plant cells. The first is the parenchyma cells. They are the most abundant. They have thin primary cell walls only. They have a variety of functions like food storage, photosynthesis, cellular respiration, they usually divide and differentiate into other cell types. Colinkum cells have thick primary cell walls only. They are for support in parts of the plant that are still growing. Sclerinchyma cells have a hard secondary cell wall and it is hardened with lignin. Sclerinchyma cells are usually found in areas that have stopped growing. They are dead when they are mature and they create support. There are two major types of sclerinchyma cells. Fibers, which are long and slender in bundles, we find those in hemp and it's the string and celery. Or sclerids, which are considered um, stone cells because they're short, irregular, and have very hard secondary cell walls. They, we find them in the coats of seeds and the shells of nuts. And also, if you're familiar with the grit in a pear, that's because of the, pleasant, the presence of sclerids. The water conducting cells that are found in the xylem consist of the tracheid, which are long and tapered, and the vessel elements, which are wider. Food conducting cells, which are found in the phloem, are made of sieve two members. They have no secondary walls. The ends have holes for sugars and other nutrients to pass through. We can look at the different types of tissues found in plants, beginning with the epidermis. That is like the skin, and it covers and protects the plant. The cuticle is a waxy coating secreted by the epidermis. As you know, the vascular tissue is the, tissue is the xylem and phloem. It is arranged in vascular bundles in the stems. It is for support and transport. It is also what is found in the vein of a leaf. Ground tissue fills the space between the vascular and epidermal tissues. In roots, the ground tissue forms the cortex, which is parenchyma cells. It stores food and takes up minerals. The endodermis in the root is the innermost layer of the cortex. It determines what passes into the vascular tissue. 
in stems, the ground tissue forms the pith. It fills the center of the stem. And in leaves, the ground tissue is the mesophyll. It contains parenchyma cells for photosynthesis. Leaves have a stomata, which are tiny pores in the epidermis. They are surrounded by guard cells, which regulate the opening of the stomata. Primary growth in plants involves the lengthening of a plant. Plants grow indeterminately. In other words, they never stop growing. Annuals complete their life cycle in one year or one growing season. These are the types of flowers that you would plant every spring. In New Jersey, you're not supposed to print, plant these until after Mother's Day, which is the second weekend in May. Traditionally, there has not been a frost after the middle of May. Biennials complete their life cycle in two years. They grow small in the first year and they flower in the second year. Perennials live and reproduce for many years. These are the types of plants like tulips that come back every year. The advantage is they come back every year and you don't have to replant them. The disadvantage is their flowers don't last very long. Meristem is the growth tissue. It is localized, unspecialized cells. Apical meristems are at the tips of roots and the terminal and axial buds. They produce new cells that elongate the plant. Apical meristems cause primary growth, which is lengthwise growth. The root cap protects the tip of the root, which is the apical meristem. Cell division and cell lengthening help the roots to grow. In roots, the cells of the vascular cylinder differentiate into primary xylem and phloem. Secondary growth increases the girth of the plant. This refers mostly to woody plants. There's two types of meristems involved in secondary growth, the vascular cambium and the cord cambium. The vascular cambium gives rise to secondary xylem and phloem. The secondary xylem has two layers. The inner layer is the first year of secondary growth and the outer layer is the second year of secondary growth. The secondary xylem makes up the wood of trees. Wood is basically made of xylem cells and fibers with thick walls and a lot of lignin. Trees get thicker each year as vascular cambrium produces layers of secondary xylem. The rings are due to different conditions each year, which varies the activity of the secondary xylem. The cord cambium is the type of meristematic tissue that forms from parenchyma cells in the cortex. As the stems thicken due to secondary xylem, the cord cambium is pushed outward. Mature cork cells are dead with thick walls. Bark is everything external to the vascular cambium, and bark is made of secondary phloem, cork cambium, and cork. We've already looked at the flower in the angiosperm. As you know, the sepals and the petals are the sterile parts that don't directly participate in reproduction. The sepals enclose and protect the bud, and the petals may attract pollinators if they are not air or wind pollinated. The stamen is the male organ, and the anther is the sac at the top where meiosis occurs, producing pollen grains. The carpal is the female organ, the stigma is the sticky top, and the ovary is at the bottom and houses the ovules or the eggs. The sporophyte is the diploid plant body, and it produces anthers and ovules. The gametophyte is the haploid generation, and it produces pollen grain and, embryo, and the embryo sac. Pollen grains, which um, contain the male gametophyte, are produced because the anther cell undergoes meiosis and forms four haploid spores. Each spore undergoes mitosis, so the pollen grain is made of two haploid cells resulting from that. There's the tube cell and the generative cell in the pollen grain. The ovule, um, and there are many in each ovary, contain a central cell which undergoes meiosis surrounded by the protective smaller cells. The central cell that undergoes meiosis produces four haploid spores. Three degenerate and one divides via mitosis to form the embryo sac, which is multicellular. That is the female gametophyte. It contains one large cell with two haploid nuclei and one haploid egg. 
pollination is the delivery of pollen to the stigma of the carpal, and this occurs through wind or animals. The pollen grain develops on the stigma. The tube cell grows into the pollen tube, which goes down to the ovary. At the same time, ge the genitor cell forms two sperms via mitosis. The pollen tube penetrates the embryo sac and releases two sperm. One sperm fertilizes the egg, which becomes the zygote and then the embryo, and the other sperm joins the central cell in the embryo sac, creating a 3N nucleus, which forms tissue that nourishes the embryo. This is called the endosperm, and this process is double fertilization. The ovule's coat becomes the seed coat. At this point, the seed becomes dormant. Growth and development are suppressed or suspended. Dormancy is an important evolutionary adaptation, allowing the seed to be dispersed. The fruit is the mature ovary that protects and nourishes the seeds. It also aids in dispersal. After pollination, the flower loses its petals. Hormones cause the ovary to grow. The walls of the ovary expand and thicken to create the fruit or the pod. Germination is when the seed takes up water. The seed expands, the seed coat ruptures, the embryo begins to grow. Stored nutrients are digested by enzymes and feed the embryo. The root emerges first, followed by the shoot. When the shoot breaks through the ground, photosynthesis begins.